Lord God, as we go into prayer this morning, we thank you, hallelujah, for your unconditional love. We thank you, Lord God, for just being our protector throughout this week. We thank you, Lord God, when we didn't feel well, you begin to come in and heal our bodies. Lord God, I thank you this morning for the people that seek the sanctuary and those who are on their way. We come for no other reason but to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, but to lift up your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your holy name, Lord God. Lord God, we just want to say thank you for the spirit. We want to say thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us discernment. Hallelujah. We thank you for that discernment, oh God, because we can't do it without you, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you fill those who need to be filled with your spirit, Lord God, because there is an identity crisis going on, and we got to get in our word, and we got to pray like never before. Tabernacle. 
house this morning. Any visitors in the house this morning? No visitors in the house this morning? No? Sorry? Got some bread babies. All right. Praise the Lord for bread babies in the house. Amen, amen, amen. We extend a welcome to those in here that are in the house, but also those that are online. We extend a welcome to you to let you know that we do Love you. We appreciate you. We're glad that you're in the house this morning. And for those that are online joining us, we're going to welcome you also. And we welcome you to be in this service. Even though that it may be digital, you can still feel the spirit through the airways this morning. And we invite you to please come and join us here at the Last Days Church at 2311 Boston Avenue here in Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. 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 Now it is offering time. Offering time. Got your apps in the back. Offering time, amen? Amen. 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 I don't know about you. The first song said something about turn it around. Yes. Turn it around. Yes. Anybody need God to turn some things around for them? Hallelujah. It's interesting that the Bible talks about the fact that when we give, it's not just financial blessings that we receive. That's yes. right. He also gets in the middle of some other stuff Amen. that we are in need of for him. I'm going to do something by faith this morning. Everybody stand up. We all going to stand up this morning. Praise team, stand up. Drummer, stand up. Misha, stand up. Everybody stand up this morning. Okay? I can do this. There ain't no visitors in the house. <laughs> You'd be like, what they doing? All right. Everybody that has something they need God to do for them this morning, All right. raise your hand. Okay? Think about that thing that you need God to do for you. Yes. Hey, glory. Now, everybody, turn around. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning.
to your neighbor yes, sir. and say, I say this, I turned around. But now God's going to turn it around. And it's going to work out in my favor. It's going to work out in my favor. Glory to God. says in Proverbs 3 and 9, he says, honor the Lord with your possessions mm -hmm. and with the first fruits of all of your increase. Yes. Why? He says, so that your barns will be filled with plenty, and that your vats will not be filled, but the word says it will overflow yes. with new wine. Yes. Mm, there's so much in that. <laughs> there's so much in that. Glory to God. To where he's saying, as you give of your possessions, you're honoring me. Because he says that I'm the one that gave them to you in the first place. And if you have a heart to turn around and give them back to me, all that other stuff that you're worried about, he says, I'm going to take care of that. Yes. Just because we honor him with what he has blessed us with. Yes. Father, today we bring you an offering. Yes. And we give it to you out of faith. Yes. We're putting our faith in action and we believe that you will honor it. And Father, right now I pray that you would bless the lives of your people. Touch them, Lord. Because they're giving, Lord God, believing that they are serving a God that cannot lie. Yes. And we pray right now that this offering is multiplied. Yes. That it comes forth in abundance, oh God. Yes. Because there are needs that need to be met. Yes. There are people who need to be saved. Yes. This ministry needs to stretch yes. and touch the heart of people. Yes. And that comes only through resource. Yes. And Lord God, I'm saying it right now. The resources, yes. they're in the house. Yes. The resources yes. are in the house. So right now, Lord God, anoint and bless every gift, every giver. Have your way this morning, Lord. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
praise right now. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on. Come on, let's shoot this the Lord this morning in Jesus name and uh, we thank God for worship thank God in Jesus name Amen. he's the reason I came out I didn't come for no other reason he's the reason that I came he's the reason that I got up he's the reason that I have joy I thank God this morning in Jesus name God is listening to you. Yes. Yes. Do any of y'all know that God hears you? That God hears you. God, tell somebody, He hears you. He hears you. Guess what? Even when you don't say nothing, He hears you. Y'all better say something to me. He hears you. I'm, I'm going to testify that I'm going to give it to the Word of God. So, a couple of weeks ago, during the anniversary, we were picking up some equipment that we had rented to take to the hotel. And a couple of days before the anniversary, I was in the music store, and I saw this unique instrument. And it simulates a steel drum like you hear in the Caribbean. And I played it in the store, and I saw some of them, and some of them were expensive, some of them were inexpensive. And I said in my heart, I said, I wouldn't mind 
mind having one of those for the church? Because, you know, most of the time when I'm thinking, I know favoring for me is for kingdom purposes. And so I said, I wouldn't mind having one of those. So, I was at work this week. I started hearing this noise in the showroom. And I followed the noise. And it was the instrument that I saw in the music store. And I was like, wow, I just looked at one of these things. And so they were playing it and, you know, they were making music with it. I was like, wow. So they came in the next day. They played it again. And one of the managers, I noticed he picked it up and he came to my office. And he said, you know what, Tim? I bought this and I bought a guitar. He says, and I'm probably not going to play this that much. I said, okay. He said, well, it's yours. Take it to the church. That's my offer. <laughs> said, no, it's yours. Take it to the church. He said, that's the offering. I hope you look like that. I hope you look real quick. He gave me the bag. I got the stand. I got the mouse to go to it. It's three days old. It's brand new. I said, thank you for your favor, God. I said, thank you for your favor, God. Thank you for your favor, God. Still, got a testimony about God's favor. Several weeks ago, before the anniversary, Elder Bartell, who preached for us on Sunday morning, is also a tailor. So I had him. Make me a suit and a shirt. Well, the factory made a mistake. They made the suit, but they made the wrong shirt. And they put my initials on the shirt. So Elder Bartell called me. And he said, Tim, I got a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, man, they got the suit right, but they made the wrong shirt. And he showed me where he sent them the right stuff, the right number, the right material, so on, so on, so I said, well, I need the other shirt because that shirt goes with the suit. He says, they're going to make it over. They're going to do it quickly. He said, I said, so, okay, well, what you going to do with this shirt that they made wrong? He said, I can't do nothing with it, but give it to you. <laughs> It's got your initials on it. So he sent me the shirt. I didn't pay for the shirt. So then, this I'm just telling you, there's a place you can get with God where he listens to you. Even when you don't say nothing. So, I got the shirt. And I put it with this suit. And I knew I wanted to wear this shirt with this suit. But I didn't have the right time. And I said, Lord, I need to tie and go with this. You know, I said, because I got, I'm going to tell them myself, I got a Gucci tab, but I can't find it. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> I've been searching the house and I can't find it. So I said in my heart, I said, God, I want another tie to wear with this. So I was at work, I made a run. I went to a tailor shop to pick up something that they were all trying. And when I was waiting, I started looking at their ties. And I found this tie. And when I picked the tie up, I looked at it. And I said, oh my God, I said, this tie has a stain on it. The owner said, Tim, what are you talking about? I said, somebody touched this tie with chocolate. There's a lump of chocolate on it. 
She says, oh, you can have it. I said, what do you mean? She says, just take it. You can have it. Don't worry about it. She says, bring it here. I brought it to the front desk. She says, give me a second. She went in the back. She got some tired wipes. I said, well, work it, Jesus. She wiped it off. I said, you sure it ain't no stain? She said, it's not going to stain. It dried up. She says, Tim, have a good day. So I skipped out to my car <laughs> with my new top. And guess what? It was the same day that he gave me that instrument. So I'm just walking in favor. And so I say that not because of the stuff of the thing. I know why favor is resting on me. I know why favor is coming. Amen. 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 Tell somebody favor ain't for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. You might be the recipient of the benefit, but that ain't what it's for. Amen. God might allow some stuff to fall on you, but that ain't what it's for. Amen. So I believe in God that He's He just let me know I'm, I got you. He just let me know that I'm with you. In Jesus' name. And my wife can't put me in rehab because I didn't pay for this. I'm in covenant, sister. Stand up with us. We're getting ready to go into the word of God. I thank God for all of you that are here. I do want to say this to us. We need to be conscious uh, and aware that uh, a resurgence of COVID is happening. Amen. And there are some people out this morning because they've been affected uh, by it. So I want us to be uh, conscious that uh, we do what we need to do. Uh, we, we might have to go back to uh, uh, observing some some social distancing or wearing a mask, whatever. Uh, and for those of us, uh, I say this gingerly, for those of us who have underlying conditions, we need to be more conscious. Amen. Because ain't nobody going to take care of you like you going to take care of you. Don't nobody know you like you know you. Amen. So let's be conscious of that in Jesus' name. But oh my God, please stand up with me if you can. Put on the seatbelt. Because this is getting ready to be full contact. Amen. Full contact. And Sister Hart. Hey, her granddaughter, one of her granddaughters is with her. She's saying, what's your name again? What is it? London? Like, like the city of London, like London Bridge is falling down. All right, they ain't falling at all. London. She, she is so sweet. She was at the picnic, and she has such a beautiful disposition as a lady, proper. She had respect and tact, and I bless God for. I believe that God is going to bless London in Jesus. Name. Everybody say bless London, Lord. Bless London. Bless London. Amen. So we're getting ready to go into the Word of God. I'm happy to see all of you. Some of you all we have not seen. and We're glad to see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad that you are with us. Those of you that are at home, we thank God. But I'm, I'm on a mission. Thank you, Lord. I am on a mandate by God to help the saints get to another dimension of life. Yes. All right. Thank you, Lord. And it ain't no secret by now. I'm talking to you about a fulfilled life. Yes. Yes. A fulfilled life. Amen. 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 Because I don't want to see the saints be less than who God said they can be. Amen. I don't want the saints to enjoy less than what God said you can Amen. enjoy. Right. Amen. I don't want you to mentally reduce yourself to what they say. All right. All right. Amen. I want you to get a mental grasp of what he said. Yes. And if he said it, I believe it. Amen. 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 amen, amen. So we're going to the, the scripture found in John chapter 10. And you ought to know it by heart by now. 10 and 10, John 10 and 10. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. there are a few people traveling. There are a few people um, that are on the road right now. We pray for them. And I want you, excuse me, I want you to keep in prayer um, Morocco, the country. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And our last looking, there was over 2,000 people dead. Yes. And still counting. Yeah, I got and, and 
they're saying that they're expecting aftershocks from this earthquake in Jesus' name. We just want to pray. We want to pray for uh, our country because politically we are in a mess. Politically we are in a mess. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for or what to vote for. I'm going to tell you vote, exercise your right. But politically we are in a mess. Amen. But see, you know what I what, what I find peace in over COVID? What I find peace in is the kingdom that I'm praying for ain't going to come through the White House. Yes. Amen. 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 The kingdom that I'm believing God for, it ain't political at all. It's powerful. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I'm believing that God is going to do Lord. that uh, in Jesus' name. Yes. Uh, the book of John, chapter number 10, verse number 10. Come on, y'all read it. Read it with some power. Read it with some enthusiasm. Come on. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that thou might have life, and that you might have it more. One more time with a little bit more enthusiasm. Come on. The thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it more. So I'm going to minister to you today about a fulfilled life part three. Part three. Part three. Fulfilled life. I tell somebody I want a fulfilled life. I want a fulfilled life. Amen. Amen. I will not do those of you who have been here the injustice of trying to summarize what I've already talked about. Right, right. If you've missed any part, you need to go back and look at it. You can go on our website, you can go back and look at it, you can go on YouTube, you can go back, you can look at it. And you need to grasp this because this is not just a message. This is a life tool. Amen. It is a tool that if you utilize it, you will be the recipient of the benefits of what I'm getting ready to share with you. How I only surmise by saying this, there's three dimensions of your life that need to be affected. Number one, you need to be saved. Amen. Number two, you need to find purpose. And then number three, you need to live a life of integrity. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And so I asked the question, are you living the life that he came for you to live? Yes. He said he came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Right. So are you living the life that he died for you to live? Oh, are you living the life that he rose for you to have? Yes. Right. Amen. So I found out a lot of people are unhappy, are not satisfied, are unfulfilled. Because they haven't tapped into what the essence of life truly is. That's right. That's right. We've reduced life to thinking that life is stuff and things. Right. Mm -hmm. But life is far much more than that. Yes. Have you ever got stuff and things and they made you mad? Mm -hmm. Have you ever got stuff and things? Come on, talk to me, sisters. Right. Do you ever been watching that dress, watching that dress, and you finally got the dress and it don't fit good? Yeah. Uh, you wear these high. You didn't enjoy it. Amen. I remember I was going crazy over this suit. I got the suit. That suit gave me a headache, man. I said, oh my God. Amen. And I went through all of this trying to get that. It was unfulfilled by it. Because the reality, life does not consist in the abundance of things that you possess. You can have stuff and things and be unfulfilled. It ain't about money. It ain't about stuff and things. So, you've been suspended on a branch for seven days now. Because I tried to suspend you and leave you there. I'm going to get you out this tree now. I did it on purpose so that you would stay with me. And what I shared with you, you better put your seatbelt on because it's we, we've been cleared for takeoff. All right. 
I said this to you last week and I left you hanging. Your job is how you get paid. Your calling is why you were made. Hello? I'm going to deal with both dimensions of that statement because the reality of it is the, the one that takes more preeminence is the latter part of the statement. Is your calling is why you were made. You're never going to live a fulfilled life until you tap into your calling. Until you tap into the reason that you was made. I'll deal with that in a minute, but let me deal with the first part. Sister Kim. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm going to you know. <laughs> She's going into intercessors. Come on, Pastor. Oh my God, Pastor. You, I felt your prayer. I'm bound right now. Your job is how you get paid. Put on your seatbelt. Because I'm about to throw some bricks. I want to talk to us about work ethics. Why? Because a lot of people want fulfillment, but aren't willing to work for it. Hello? And you know what I found out? People don't appreciate what they did not work for. Hello? People don't take care of the stuff that they did not work for as well as they do the stuff that they sweated over. Do I got a witness in this house? Somebody just throw your hands up and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so grateful that my life was influenced with a good work ethic from my mother. Being a single parent with three hard-headed kids, I watched my mother get up when she didn't feel good. I watched her go to work, drive in the snow in the middle. Cause see, ain't no snowboarding up in Detroit. It's snowboarding is froze, man. <laughs> Hello? I watched her get up. I watched her go to work. I watched her come home tired and still cook and clean and, and supply and watch clothes and make sure that we had. And I gleaned that work ethic from her. Y'all know Aunt Jewel has been visiting with us. I watched Aunt Jewel. Same principle. I watched her work and grind and hustle. And I watched her go from driving a old beat up Pontiac to every color Cadillac you can name. Because she had good work ethics. And the problem that a lot of people in church have is that they got a bad work ethic. You want to be blessed, but you don't want to work for it. You want God just to favor you. And what I found out is God favors the people who got a grind in their spirit. Y'all better say something to me. Oh, I told you. Put on your seatbelt. Because here come a boulder right now. Why do you say that? Because the same problem that the world is dealing with now 
is the same problem that Jesus had. What's that? Don't nobody want to work. You know how many restaurants have closed down because don't nobody want to work? You know that everybody's apologizing with shorthanded? How are you a restaurant and you got two people working? One person seating everybody running the gas register, and the other one is making all the food and delivering. Look what Jesus says. He says the harvest is plenteous. Yes. But what? Come on, y'all know everybody's saying the what? The workers are few. What is that really saying to us? Now, contextually, when we look to Luke chapter 10, when he says the harvest is plenteous, we know that he's talking about souls and people that need to be saved. That's contextual truth. But the reality, we can glean and apply this to eternal truth. What is that saying? Everything that you want is out there. But won't nobody want to go get it. He's saying everything that you desire and everything that you would love to have is out there. But contextually, you're going to let it rot on the vine because you're too lazy. Think about that. Because think about harvesting fruit. What happens to fruit that ain't harvested? It goes bad. It's on the vine, and it could have been ate if it was picked in time. You better catch what I just said. Yeah. If it was picked in time. If it was picked in time. Ask somebody, are you synchronized? Are you synchronized? Yeah. Come on, ask them, are you synchronized? That's some bell theology. Heaven don't move off courts. Yeah. Amen. Are you on God's time? Are you synchronized? Put your seatbelt on. I hope you be mad at me by the time I finish. Because guess what? I'm getting ready to throw something. I said last week at the end of service, I said I have dreams as well. I have goals as well. I have things that I want to come into fruition. Hello? But until those things materialize, my clock is set for me to get up in the morning so I can go to work on time. Tell somebody to it coming to pass you. Come on, y'all gotta say it, y'all say it. And to it come to pass, you gotta go to work. And to it come to pass, you better get up and go do what needs to be done. Because while you sipping lemonade and watching as the world turns, I don't even know if that's on anymore, is it? Okay, well, all right, well, good. That tells you that I ain't watching. But while you chilling, I'm on the grind. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to do what I need to do for my family. I'm trying to make sure that every time we click the light switch, it stay on. I'm trying to make sure that every time the first of the month come around, the bill is paid. I've had my share of pink and blue notices. I don't like them. I don't like them. I haven't seen one in a long time. And I don't plan on seeing one in a long time. Why? Because I'm doing what I got to do. Hello? Hello? So I hope you get this. Ooh, I got to throw one on you. Elder Coleman, are you praying? I'm talking about Lady Coleman. Elder Coleman, are you praying? Please pray for me. I need to feel something right now. <laughs> Let's go to Second Thessalonians. Let me take you where the rubber hit the road at. Good 
God, man, are you? I thought I was further than this. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Ooh, I got to get on the train. Oh, Lord, man. Come on, Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Y'all start at verse 10. What does it say? And don't try to read too fast. We was went to Paul. What did he say? Paul, command, the Greek term here is in tole. I give you a direct order. I give you a direct commandment that what? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That if any will what? Will what? Will not work what? Neither shall be. Don't you like work? I mean, don't you like eating? Okay. You are not at the age of accountability yet. So you ain't got to worry about this verse for a couple more years. <laughs> <laughs> but Christy, believe me, your mama might not be, but your daddy is looking at the calendar. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Because mama always, that's my baby. Just come on in, baby. That's what mama do. But thank God for a daddy. That will teach you principles. And if you was brought up by a single mother, thank God for a single mother who put pants on sometimes. Because if you don't work, what does it say? You don't eat. Oh, Bell, don't say it, Bell. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Let's let the word say it. All right. So you won't have no problem with me. Let's let the word say it so you won't have no issue with me. Hello, if you get mad at this, you just mad at God. And last time I checked, your arm was too short to try and box with you. Verse 11, come on, what does it say? Because people who don't work got time on their hands. <laughs> who business they in yours? Who business they in somebody else's? Who, who, guess what? They don't never talk about themselves. They always talk about somebody else. What they did. Could you believe God? Mm. What did he call? Don't look at me. What did he call? Verse 11. What did he call? He said what? Busy bodies. My boy Almighty told me I'm the last day. ain't satisfied unless so fit. That's right. That's right. Some of y'all call who do you Okay. Hold on. Verse 12. So you know what he said? I'm giving them a commandment that they learn how to shut up and start working and eat their own bread. Because I'm telling you something. I'll look out for people, but you ain't going to eat up all my bread while you sitting back chilling. Oh, Pastor, don't say that. Oh, Pastor, you love me. I shall do fast today. Because people will pray on you. I had a brother and sister give that joke and prayed on me. Praise the Lord. I, 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 Pastor Bell, uh, Minister Bell. I was a minister at that. I praise the Lord. You love me? I said, yeah, I love you. Bless the Lord. You think you can give me fifth and up? Yeah, there you go in Jesus' name. <laughs> See, I'm full of joy. Just got saved. <laughs> Next week. Praise the Lord, Minister Bell. I said, praise the Lord. You love me? Yeah, I love you. You think we can go to dinner with y'all? Yeah, come on. Hallelujah. That third week, you hit me. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. You love me? I said, yeah, I love you. He said, you think you can let us go to so-and-so? I said, 
said, go on. Because I saw his spirit. He was trying to play on my heart. He was trying to play on my spirit. Tell somebody, don't play on my spirituality. I love you, but I also rebuke you. I love you, but I lay hands on you. I love you, but I tell you where to get off at. I don't like this. I don't make up my mind. You look at me, look at me, eyeball me. Get mad at me if you want. I ain't sewing into a hole. When I know it's a hole, don't get me wrong, I help you, I bless you, but when I realize it's a hole and you ain't trying to fill that hole up, I ain't sewing into that. I want to sit down right now. <laughs> but I can't. I got a job to do. I don't want to go to work tomorrow. I ain't even tomorrow. I already know I don't want to go. <laughs> but guess what? I'm going to be there. You know why? Because I like the benefits of working. You know why? I like living the life that I live. You know why? I like doing the things that I do. See, let me, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. I ain't going to be all spiritual because sometimes we get too spiritual and oh, God is good and God is blessed and God has did that. No, some of the experiences I had, I had because I went to work. Some of the things that I bought, I bought them because I went to work. You got to say something to me. Don't just give God all the glory. I showed up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and was mad on Saturday when I there. So when I go on vacation and I see something I want, I buy what I want. Why? Because I want to go on vacation. Oh God, God be praying for that vacation I need. Hello? People look at me, they ask me all the time. Bill, you got money. I ain't got no money. I got work ethics. Hello? I ain't rich. I'm having dress rehearsal. You might think I am, but I'm a regular dude who go to work every day. And the problem is, listen to this. Somebody said, Tim Bell, you live in a nice house. Tim Bell, you go on serious vacations when you go on vacation. I'll show you lay away. <laughs> You can put vacations in layaway. Five hundred dollars down, thirty dollars here, hundred dollars there, two hundred dollars there. Next thing you know, pack your bag, baby, let's go. Hello. And you can live a fulfilled life without being a crook. So I asked him, I said, Tim, tell you. You just come from Egypt. You been last year. I heard you went here. You drive this. You got that. How many cars you got? I said my garage is full. Amen. So how many garage doors you got? I got a few. A couple. Amen. They said, "Well, tell Bell how you're a preacher. The church is good to you." I said, "Let me tell you something." I said, "I'm almost sixty. I've been working since I was 15. I'm supposed to have stuff. I'm supposed to be black. Doors are supposed to be open. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Anybody been working since they was 15, 16, 17, 18? Come on. Somebody give God a praise. Don't let nobody make you and then feel like you ain't worthy of it. Don't let nobody make you feel like God shouldn't do it for you. I asked him, I said, I said, how old your daddy? He said, oh, my daddy is. I said, oh, I'm older than your daddy. I said, your daddy got a nice car. No. Your daddy got a nice house. Not really. I said, your daddy work? No. Yeah. <laughs> hey, once in a while. I, said, I haven't had a break. When they sent me home from COVID, for 30, for 90 days, I said, hallelujah to the Lamb. <laughs> Y'all telling me I have to go home? And then the system in 
place for me to get paid while I'm at home? I said, I'll go. I show sure where for y'all want me to sign that. I ain't had to break it three months off. See, some of y'all, that ain't gonna tell you because you've been off for the last three years. I know this. I know this don't feel good. But I'm trying to help you. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to help you. Because you ain't going to eat up all my bread while you lying on your bed. Oh, don't let him, don't let, don't, don't let him eat. Y'all, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. I'm going to get you work. Don't get mad at me. Because some people got bad work ethics and you want to live where I live. You can't. You want to drive what I drive. You can't. You got bad work ethics. Because what I do, it, it is the byproduct of what I've done. And all I did was got up and went to work. Hello? And I ain't talking about life happens. I've been to the point where I had to borrow money. I've been to the point where I had to call and make an arrangement. I've been to a point where you don't need an arrangement to, to uh, 11 months out of 12. If you need an arrangement 11 months out of 12, something's wrong with your work ethic. Something's wrong with your managed money and skills. Hello? And don't get me wrong. I love shop. It's therapy. I called my mom one time. I was in Saxman Avenue. I got it honest. I was in Saks Fifth Avenue. My mom said, what you doing? I said, therapy. <laughs> she said, you shopping? She said, yeah. I said, yeah. She said, where you at? I said, I'm in Saks. I'm rubbing on the cash with a coat right now. <laughs> she said, yeah, I'm in Dietrich Furs. I'm looking at this phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I said, mom, get out there. So she said, you get out. <laughs> Was bad people who got your spirit can't pray for you. They can't deliver you. I love Sister Tacoma, but she can't pray for me. It ain't gonna lose nothing. Oh! It ain't moving. It ain't moving, Pastor Bell. No, well, let's go then. Okay. Hello? I'm giving you word now. I'm giving you word. I'm giving you word. Um, Verse 13, come on. Don't you get wore out or tired for doing well. You keep doing well. You keep doing what you do. You keep blessing people. But let me tell you something. Learn wisdom. Because sometimes you need to say no. And don't let somebody make you feel like you are spiritual because you say no. Oh, I know y'all upset with me. But you need to be upset with Paul, not me. I didn't say this. I'm just reading. Verse 14, come on. You know what he said? Don't nobody make a change after you done told him. He said, mark them. He said, make a note. He said, note them, huh? Anthony, mm. Reggie, make a note. That's what he's saying. Mark them. Make a note. What else? Oh, the word is hard. Kim, the word saying, don't have company with him. Now, notice now, the reason he's saying this is that he's trying to coerce a change. He ain't saying just don't. He, he ain't saying treat him bad. Or he's saying hold on, just be very discreet in what you do with him. Look at what he says in the next verse. Come on, he says, uh, uh, hold on, have no company with him. That he what? Tell somebody you ought to be sure. I'm not scared to say that, John. Look at him. Don't be scared of him. You ought to be shaming. You said God is your father? 
and he ain't opening no doors, you ought to be shame of yourself. Hello? Hello? God is your father. He ain't making the way you ought to be shamed of yourself. Because if you stay connected to God, you do the right thing, you apply his words and things is going to change in your life. Verse 15, what did he say? So y'all can see I ain't being cold. He ain't your enemy. You see what he's telling you to do? He said, don't count him as your enemy, but what? Treat him like a brother. But encourage him, admonish him, warn him, enlighten him as a brother. Oh, real quick. I got time. Yes. I got time. Proverbs chapter 6. Come on, go there real quick. Proverbs chapter 6. <laughs> you just look gorgeous today. Yes, <laughs> Why don't you talk to me? Say something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't help you. <laughs> just honor, boy. The bed is under fire. Amen. My wife is a representative of me. Amen. When she look good, I look good. Amen. Amen. When I look good, she look good. Amen. You know, sometimes we get dressed. I tell her, put her arm on that. Come on, strut. Won't keep fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Right. sighs> I'm just relaxed. I ain't in a hurry. I, I ain't pressured at all. I ain't pressured at all. Because I want you to live a fulfilled life. Amen. Proverbs chapter 6, real quick. I'm going to hit two more verses and I'm, I'm going to leave this alone. I ain't even get to the Lord of that verse. I ain't even get to the second part of your calling is why you made. I'm still trying to get you paid. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 6, what does it say? In other words, pay attention to the end. And then he says what? Oh, what is a slugger? Lazy and active. He said, look at an end. Stop being lazy. Stop being inactive. What does he say? Go. And pay attention to what this ant is doing. Because every time you see ants, they look like they're walking, but they're really working. They look like they're just walking, but they're really working. You know what the ant saying? Mm -hmm. It's almost over. Let me get this Dorito right quick and go put it up. <laughs> you, you laughing. But it's true. You see them. And what, what's so nice about ants? Ants ain't got a problem helping each other. You ever notice when you see a trail of ants they in a straight line? Why? Because they saying, go this way, then come back this way, and we're going to keep sucking this stuff up. So he says, consider the ant, you slugger, what? And be wise. Okay, come on. Ain't nobody got to tell them what to do. That's what he's saying. He's saying ain't nobody telling them what to do. Ain't nobody guiding them and leading them and got an overseer. What does he say? Come on. Provides her meat in the sun. And I tell people this sometimes some of the managers get mad at me. I tell some of them Thundercats. When prosperity comes, don't spend it all. Hello? Because you you know, you got some Thundercats, they selling 25, 30 cars a month. I'm talking about they making stupid money. And I tell them, don't spend it all. Because you're going to have a month where it ain't going to be like that, and you need a cushion. Hello? And I was a Thundercat at one time. There's one thing that's addictive about 
about fast money. When you make fast money, you get a dope dealer's mentality. You always think I can get more. I can go get more. All I got to do is do it. Hello? So, and provide her meat in the summer. What else? Gather her food and harvest. See, the problem is when, when you won't work and you won't be in sync with God, you trying to gather when it ain't that time. You trying to harvest when it ain't time to harvest. Hello? Read, come on, real quick. Oh, Lord, how long are you going to sleep? Oh, Lord, how long are you going to sleep? He asked the question, oh, how long are you going to sleep? What else does he say? When are you going to wake up? He's saying, when are you going to wake up? He asked a serious question. When are you going to wake up? What else, Read. Oh, this is you, a little sleep. A little stomach. Oh, I'm just chilling. Oh, I'm just going to relax for a minute. A little fold of the hand. Look what he's saying. If you keep sleeping, you keep slumbering, you keep folding your hand, he said, oh, so what? No, he just didn't say your lack. He said, pardon. See, there's a difference between lack and pardon. Poverty is, I mean, uh, poverty is when you poor. Yeah, yeah. Notice I didn't say poor. I said poor. Oh, no. You got extra old. Right. Uh -huh. Hello? Yes. Look at this. I know you don't like this. I know this ain't what you want to hear. But if you want to live a fulfilled life, you better yes. hear me. Yes. Social poverty, what else? All right, what was that, verse 11? Yes. All right, we finished with that. Let me hit one more verse, and I'm going to get ready to go. I'm going to let go, I promise you. Uh, please uh, make your, sure that your seats are in the upright position. Put away all self-destructive devices. <laughs> okay. Okay. Make sure shortly... We'll pass through the cabin and pick up any debris that we left. But we're getting ready to land this plane in fulfillment. Amen. We get ready to land this plane on fulfilled life. Amen. Very quickly, I love this verse, Kim. I love this verse. This verse speaks volumes to me. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 11. Mother O'Neill, I told people before, you got to stop letting the weather dictate your productivity. Because often we let the weather dictate our productivity. Ooh, I'm going to tell you something. You know what? In the business that I'm in, I'm in sales. I sell you anything from a weed worker to a dump truck. <laughs> from a pinto to a bed. It don't matter. Hello? Just call me. Amen. L250. Okay. A moped or whatever you want. Just call me. Hello? But you know what I found out in my business? Everybody likes the summer and it's sunny and it's nice. But when you work in those days, it's bad for business. Why? Because everybody on the golf course. Why? Everybody at the tennis courts. Everybody's swimming. They have to drive in range. Because it's sunny and it's nice. People are out gardening. They're planting, you know, gazellas and gladiolas and, you know, Orchids and all kind of, they just, and you know what I found out? Ramona? I like when it's raining and I'm at work. Because can't nobody go on the golf course. <laughs> Ain't nobody at the tennis court. Ain't nobody in their backyard trying to plant those. They said, well, I'm going to go look at some cars. Come on right in. I got an umbrella. 
Because I found out our productivity goes up when it's raining. And I'm going to hit you with something else. Life is going to throw you some gloomy days. But people who bring their own sunshine don't worry about gloomy days. Did you hear what I just said? Life is going to hit you with some gloomy days, but if you got your own sunshine, you ain't worried about that. Let's read this verse, Mama. And tell somebody, stop it. Everybody look at me for a second. Look at me for a second. Stop looking at the news all the time. Amen. What the news do? It looks like it's going to rain. Probably a 30% chance. It should be over Franklin around 10 15. And you say, it's 12 minutes after we better go. You're letting a forecast from some people. I want to go look, look. I want to go down there and look. <laughs> That's the only people who can be wrong 70% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you still get up and watch the next morning. Well, we weren't expecting rain, but we had a shower pop up on yesterday, and we believe today the barometric pressure. Hello, let me show this with you. Stop watching the news and stop letting the weather dictate your success. Yes. Look what this verse says, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 verse, verse 4, we get ready to go. Come on. What does it say? Hold on! You looking at the wind, you ain't gonna plan nothing. Right? Cause you know what? You know what? You know what? Cause you said the wind is gonna blow my seeds away. You know what my friend that's deceased Reggie told me? He told me this years ago. He said, Bell, quit worrying about where the seeds is gonna fall at. He said, just plant this song, just throw them out there. I said, Red, he said, why? I said, why you say that, Red? He said, because three, three, the, the dimensions that three of them are going to fall in ain't going to be no good anyway, but the ones that fall in good ground is going to be enough for you to be blessed by. Amen. I said, go ahead. I, I, he, we call that some of his parabolic sayings. <laughs> so he, the person who's looking at the wind ain't going to suck. Because you're so worried it's going to blow it in the wrong place. Hello? And what else? The one that's looking at the clouds ain't going to reap. So now, you totally inactive because you're looking out the window. The wind is I don't want to put no seeds out there. Look, the clouds over here, I ain't going to sow. I mean, I'm not going to reap. Which means you're not going to get the harvest. You know what I found out? Whenever you accomplish something, you appreciate it better when you had to work for it. Yeah. It's sweeter when you had to work for it. You enjoy it more when you had to work for it. Hello? Yeah. Any of y'all ever had some of them 10 step days? Any of y'all ever had a 10 step day? Y'all said, that's what you talking about. You know how you get out your car, you take 10 steps, and you look back and smile? Uh -oh. oh, Mother O'Neill said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> any of y'all believe some 10 step days is coming? Because oh, yeah. you're going to work and do what you need to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Ten step days. I get out of my car in the morning. I take about ten steps. I turn around. I smile. I say, "Yeah, it's worth going to work." Come on, let me get on in here. Hello. Don't get upset with me. Don't be mad with me. Because I'm trying to teach you life principles. I'm trying to give you practical, everyday stuff that will change the dynamic of your life. So that you leave out and you start living a fulfilled life. Amen. 
Hello? Because you want what this person got, but you ain't willing to do what that person's done. You want to be where this person is at, but you ain't willing to do what that person did to get where they are. Come on, Neil, how many years did you work for Jerome? 27 and a half. 27 and a half. And you came out with full retirement? Mm-hmm. Now, how long have you been retired now? So you've been retired since 2006. And she got an income coming in right now because she was willing to work. Hello? You, listen, she ain't worked in 20 years almost. Hello? But guess what? She know where to check her account at because what she did, she went to work. And before she left that job, she had an agreement with them that if I work this long for y'all, y'all got to pay me. Hello? So even in retired life, she can have a fulfilled life. Now they say that. This practical. Put your hands together. Give God praise. I pick up next week. I pick up next week. Don't look at me funny. If you got an attitude with me, you got an attitude with God. If I didn't say nothing, he didn't say. I ain't bring out nothing he didn't bring out. Hello? Hello? And I found out this. I found out this. I found out this. Jesus got the same problem. Don't nobody want to work. And he says, pray that the Lord will send laborers into the harvest. Pray that God will send people with a working mind, with a working spirit, with a working heart. Let me say something to you. You become a laborer, you can eat a piece of food every once in a while. Um, I don't know how much watermelon is. You think I ain't going to eat a watermelon every once in a while? I am, my family is from Valdosta, Georgia. It's the furthest south city on 75 before you hit Florida. My grandfather had a farm. And my grandfather used to grow 90 and 100 pound watermelons. His watermelons were so big that people would come into his patch and leave their 40 pound watermelons and take one of his 100 pound And we was great kids. We would just bust the watermelons right there in the field, eat the heart of them. He found out he was going to kill us. <laughs> Boys in there busting my watermelons. Amen. But what I'm saying, we was laborers, so he didn't get too mad at us. Because we was the ones getting them out the field. We was the ones bringing them into the barn, and he could take them to the market and sell them. He wasn't mad. We done, we done harvested a hundred watermelons. You mad about us busting one? He didn't care about that. But he was trying to teach us work ethics. He was trying to teach us principles. Just like I'm trying to teach you. So for those of you that are home, we love the Lord. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. I pray that you take this word for what it is. Yes. It's nothing that I've said in and of myself. If you got an issue, that's good. That means that God is giving it to you. I'm praying for you that you would do something with what you've heard today. Until we meet again, we love you. God bless you. And have a smile upon you today. Put your hands together. <laughs>